Hey, what is up, guys? Guitar here. Welcome back to another Brave Nine video. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about four stars, three stars. Uh, not sure if I'll be able to climb it into one video. I don't want to make this video like four hours long. I'll try my best. Man, my voice sounds so different. What is happening? I just woke up. Ugh. Okay, so I did a video back then talking about five stars that I think are worth like rank boosting. So today we're going to talk about the others, which is the, the four and three stars, three and four stars. Okay, so before we proceed, I just want to make a, a quick announcement that I should be broadcasting the America server tournament uh, tomorrow. Alright, if you guys are not familiar, the time would be as follows. I'll put it on the screen. Okay, so yeah, uh, let me go ahead and... Wait, what did I want to do? Oh yes, I want to talk to you guys a bit about the new events. Okay, there's a full moon welcoming event, alright? So welcoming event dungeon. So what this does is basically just the event dungeons will be open during this period. From September 25th, alright, to October 4th. So there are quite a number of days that the, you can farm for gold and slimes. Now I'm not sure about you guys, if you need slimes, definitely that's the one to go for. But if you're looking to pull a bunch of soul gears, because right now we are having this 10% soul gear discount event thing, then going for the gold might be a better idea. So it's gonna depend on what you want. Alright, and of course, we will have the 10 days of free recruit. Alright, very cool. Okay, so you'll be having this. Next 10 days, you will get 10 free pulls every single day. So 100 freaking free pulls. That's a lot. And of course, uh, Mid Autumn Festival login and Pretzel Exchange Shop, which is already here. Alright, extra event right here. You can check in, do this, do this to collect these pretzels and you can exchange for various things. There are 5-star boosters, 4-star boosters, 3-star uh, boosters, ETC. Um, it's quite crazy because right now we have 4 events overlapping on each other. World Fortress is still here by the way. So yeah, 4 events overlapping on each other. Crazy. Okay, so let's jump into the... Uh, 4 stars first, alright, we're gonna go from warriors to defenders to magicians to supporters. Okay, let's have a look at all of these. Okay, which one I think is worth it in terms of warriors. Now, this is going to be very dependent on a lot of things. Like I mentioned, uh, mostly you want to be looking at their attack. When you rank boost a unit, so you are giving them more attack and more HP, right? Unless they are supporters. You don't get anything else. So Scarlet, is she worth it? She's kind of complicated. I would say she's somewhere in between. Uh, she might be one of those few that's more worth it than others. Okay, so I'll come back to her later, but I'm not gonna say that she's not worth it, but I would say that there are much better priorities for sure. Because uh, while her skill, her attack does scales off from attack, but it's not like attack times 350%, it also depends on the remaining HP rate. And the rest of the skills doesn't really benefit from it as well. And if you're saying that she needs the HP, she doesn't because Scarlet is extremely squishy. Uh, unless enemy gets cursed when they hit her, most of the time she's just gonna die. All right, so Maxwell is not worth it because again, Maxwell's skills scale off a crit damage. So Aizen, I would say Aizen is more worth it than Scarlet in my opinion because of this skill alone, where the attack is just straight up ignores enemies damage reduction effect caused by defense all right so aizen can go through 100 defense so that's something that's gonna give him the advantage so right now if you look at it there's not many four stars that has the ability to go through 100 defense all right maxwell can do that but he needs a condition now i do know that aizen only hits one tile all right so that's going to be somewhere like he's not going to be the favorite for most players because of you know this limiting range right here but in terms of the ability to one shot consistently if you want to have that i feel like rank boosting and aizen would be a decent idea all right of course and then we have cry lian which i don't think is like super worth it you should be like lian is good but like yeah plus 10 him is more than enough uh let's see Yin rang is also kind of like in between for me i feel like uh in comparison to scarlet uh, she's kind of similar, but when if I compare them to Aizen, I will give Aizen priority. Alright, so I must have missed some. Alright, Xenon. Hashtag worth it for sure. Alright, so why is Xenon worth it? Because uh, Xenon's 
DOT. Alright, Xenon's attack is super low, and you don't really use him for attack most of the time. You don't really use him for any sort of attack because you only need his HP most of the time. So his bleed, fixed damage bleed, depends on his max HP. So if you rank boost a Xenon, right? Now that's going to be worth it because rank boosting gives you significantly more HP than attack. Alright, so um, once the scale goes up, alright, when you equip runes, the percentage of HP that you get is going to be even higher. So I would say Xenon, if you want to have the consistency in, in you know, having the high amount of DOTs that Xenon provide, definitely, I would say he's one of the few wor worth ones. Okay, next up we have Rydal. Uh, Rydal is definitely worth it, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of situations that I feel like uh, this is something that I can relate to. I've been using her in a lot of uh, PvE stages, and she always lacks that, that tiny bit of extra damage. So rank boosting her might actually not be a bad idea. So she's going to be really useful in PvE as well, uh, compared to a lot of the others where they might not be that useful. So in my opinion, yeah, she's definitely worth it for sure. So her ability does depend on her attack as well. So that is definitely going to scale up even more. And lastly, I believe we have Dekka. Hashtag worth it for sure. Dekka is really, really um, lacking in terms of the damage. So I feel like going with the, the rank boost. Now keep in mind Dekka has very low base attack. Very low. So it does help him out a little bit, but I'm not sure like in terms of the investment return, is it like super worth it? But definitely it does help because all of his modifiers does depend on his attack. So definitely if you can in any way or form get your deck out with more, you know, more power, that would definitely help for sure. Alright, going up in the attack. Okay, let's dive into the defenders. Alright, four star defenders. Okay, so let's start off with Exile. So Exile, uh, I would say he's not worth it. Number one, not many players use him. I know there are a few niche players that use him. Number two, giving him more HP. It's not really going to help him much. He's more there to provide concentrated fire, to form taunt. All right, and it doesn't scale off much because like most of his stigma is based upon enemies max HP. All right, right, right here, enemies max HP. So same goes for Belastir as well, alright? So if it's based upon their max HP, definitely, yeah, they are worth rank boosting. But if it's based upon enemies max HP, giving them more HP is not going to help much, right? It won't make that much of a difference. So I'm going to skip Exile and Belastir for sure, alright? And then we have Ayan, which she's sort of in a similar position, okay? Again, she has Stigma that relies on Damage to the enemy's max HP, scales of that. She does have a DOT though, and that might be able to help if she has the rank boost to deal more DOT. But then again, her base attack is super low, even lower than Dekka's one if I'm not mistaken. So definitely, I don't think it's worth it. Right, even for Dekka, I would say kind of half-half, I would still favor towards the supporters. So yeah, uh, Ayan, definitely in my opinion, not worth it at all. Okay. So let's have a look, who else has plus 15 on this list? Okay, so then we have Rene, which I think she has completely fallen off the meta. I don't think I've... The last time I saw someone use Rene in Novice Arena was like 4 months ago or 5 months. I'm not even joking. Like that was like... I haven't seen any Rene being used at all. Okay, so because there's just so many better options right now, alright, with the... You know, Iris and Mora meta are still dominating. So I would say I wouldn't go for Rene unless you don't have anyone better else to rank boost, alright? So Iris, definitely worth it, okay? So she is going to be one of your main primary tank, okay? I've seen a couple of rank boosted Iris. Pretty crazy, alright? She can get up to like 18, 19,000 HP. Very strong, alright? So giving her more HP is definitely gonna be worth it. All right, she does benefit from from the HP significantly, for sure. All right, she goes up to eight zero five eight. So Mora is also definitely worth it. All right, if you look at her her attack scaling, it all scales off her attack, right? So giving her more attack does help a little bit. 
giving her more HP can... She doesn't really need more HP to be honest, but you're just going to benefit from the attack alone. But in certain cases, right, uh, just because she has more HP, that means she can survive the initial hit. This is going to matter more, especially if your Mora is like the, the later ones to move, and also if she's not plus 15. So this can actually help a little bit. So comparing to Iris, I would say Iris is probably better, but I would give her a close second probably, because on the defender's list, I would say if I were to look at all the 4 stars, like none of these are like super worth it. Yeah, for some defenders, I would say Iris is the only one that's probably the good one, followed by Mora. Alright, Magician, Morgana, uh, this is something that I get asked a lot. Uh, I would say skip her because her skill scales off crit damage. So giving her attack, right, is probably not going to be... She can benefit from it for sure, but it's just that I feel the return is very little. Alright, you should only do this like at the later part. Once you have gotten everyone upgraded, but I would say she is one of the few skips for now, unless you do use her all the time. Now Showman is probably going to be worth it compared to everyone else to rank boost, just because Showman has this ability, all right, which scales uh, this attack is incremental every turn, boosting by 10%, right? And then he has this skill that scales off the attack as well. So Showman can definitely benefit from the attack and his attack is actually really high all right look at this 3002 and going all the way if you rank boost all the way that increases by at least 20 percent all right up to 4300 so showman scaling is really really insane and once rank boosted he's going to be able to kill almost anyone almost everyone that doesn't have 100 percent defense now keep that in mind he doesn't go through 100 percent defense so there's still some situation where he won't be used at all. But in most cases, if you're thinking to rank boost and having like a, a high amount of return, I feel like Showman is the one to go for. Alright, next up we have Alicia. Okay, so Alicia is going to be pretty good as well. A pretty decent candidate to be able to benefit from the rank boost. She does have decent base attack. So again, once she is uh, max awaken all right six stars she will have 1730 and if you can max rank boost her she will get even more attack for sure and that's going to increase her damage again she does have the downside of not being able to go through 100% defense as well but her freeze and everything combined is going to be pretty insane as the i'm not entirely sure about her because she's more of a world boss hero for me i don't really use her in the novice but I can see her being useful occasionally. She's going to probably be able to one-shot almost any defenders out there. Alright, because she does have very high multiplier, you know, against defenders. So, in my opinion, most players shouldn't really uh, rank boost her. You should only rank boost her if you know what you're doing. And if you're a veteran player that already have been using Esther constantly in your Novice team. But if you don't, I don't see a point. Alright, so keep in mind again, she won't help you with her 100% defense problem. With Julie everywhere right now, uh, rank boosting her might be actually be a waste. So think carefully if you want to invest on her. Uh, she's just she's one of the first few four stars to be plus fifteen, and she has fallen out of the meta ever since. And that's about it for the magicians. So definitely, I would go for Showman followed by Alicia on this list as the priority. So next we have the four star supporters. Now this is going to be more interesting. All right. So we have plenty of good supporters right here. And I've seen plenty of players rank boosting Hefasia. Hefasia's most prominent skill is this particular one where it scales off the support, alright, to increase more attack, to increase more crit rate, right? So keep in mind she doesn't give anything else. Now Hefasia is definitely very strong in the meta right now, so I can see the reason why most players want to try to rank boost her. But of course it really depends. If you use her in your Novice Arena team, sure, but eventually I think sooner or later she's gonna slowly get replaced eventually. Alright, so we do have a couple of other supporters as well. We have Lulu, okay, so which I don't think is worth rank boosting. She definitely can do whatever she does without being rank boosted. And most of the time, if you have her at plus 15, that's gonna be more than enough. Now, Isabel, on the other hand, she is an interesting one. I would definitely favor rank boosting her for sure because I actually like her design a lot. Uh, and in PvE, I feel like I use Isabel more 
than anyone else. So that's gonna depend. All right, if you are a PVP guy, then Fasia is gonna be your priority. But if you care about PVE more, I feel like Isabel will be able to provide more. Like her crit rate and crit damage is just insane. All right, the amount that she can provide. So definitely, this two is the one that you should look into. Okay, and then we have Ebony and Serendia. Now, this two is gonna be dependent again. Now, Ebony is like a mini Michaela. She gives immunity, stats weakening, attack interference. Definitely, she can definitely benefit from a lot of things. And she gives a little bit of everything. Okay, so in PvE, she's gonna be insane. Alright, because she gives attack, she gives crit rate, she gives crit damage. Like, you can get almost everything from her. The only downside is her cross tile range. And also, she doesn't have any immunity herself, right? So not having any immunity means that she's very susceptible in PvP, in all vice. You have to position her in a way that she doesn't get charm or whatever. So Serendia on the other hand, okay, is gonna give a huge amount of attack. She does give silence as well. She has slightly more range, alright? So this is pretty huge. You're gonna have much more flexibility using her in places like Underground Arena and things like that. Alright, and she's gonna have uh, that flexibility to give you high amounts of crit rate as well. And of course, not to mention, the last supporter that's not on this list is Sui. Okay, so Sui is also pretty decent. I'm not sure how long will she be in the meta. Uh, she's gonna be a really interesting one. Okay. Uh, crit rate, she's gonna boost a lot of them. Okay. And crit damage. So she's one of those that only boosts those two. Again, crit rate, crit damage. She doesn't give any attack at all. So kind of opposite in what uh, Ebony and Serenia does. So if you're rank boosting her, just keep in mind that you know she's quite unique, she's very different. Her range and her setup style really relies on your allies be around her. So make sure you guys are aware of that. Okay, so before we end the video, so let's jump into the novice. Let's just have a look. Alright, we're gonna have a look at what are the most prominent choices of rank boosted units right here in the in my server. Okay, we'll just have a look at the top 10 players, okay? So you have Rydal, uh, Beatrice and Jaden, 3 stars, Iris, okay? So this one, this guy didn't rank boost the Hephasia, okay? <clears throat> so Iris, again, you, you'll see Iris being rank boosted. She is the top choice of rank boost. Iris again, one on Hephasia, Hephasia right here, okay? Iris, and then we have uh, Iris. Oh, there's a Sui right here, very good. And Iris here, Rydal here, very good. Okay, so we have Sui, Iris again. So we have Iris again. We have Scarlet, okay, interesting. Ayan, Scarlet, and a little bit of Iris. And last one, we have a Iris and a couple of three stars. Okay, so with that being said, uh, let me know what you guys think. Like, so far, you can see the favorite one seems to be Iris and Hephasia. But before you rank boost Hephasia, right, make sure you guys think carefully, like, does Hephasia really need the rank boost? Because uh, according to a lot of users, I don't really use her, but according to a lot of users, players have been saying that she gives almost max attack already. So is there a reason to rank boost her? I mean, that's totally up to you guys. Make sure you guys think carefully, all right, because she's going to be a very niche one. Uh, rank boosting her doesn't make her give more defense, all right, she already gives 100% defense. So if you don't think that you need that extra attack a little bit more, I don't think uh, it's worth rank boosting. Maybe just go for Iris instead. But again, it's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Alright guys, so that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, subscribe, give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.